I'm Kevin Davis, and this is the Catholic Family Podcast, and I'm joined today by my dad, sitting right here next to me. He's, it's been a while since he's been on a show, but he is a very, very regular contributor behind the scenes. He, he is definitely one who does a lot of the work of editing and a lot of the stuff that you don't see that goes on. And so it's great to have him on to talk about, well, kind of who we are, and, and we haven't really ever done this. So I think it's kind of a good time to do it. We've gotten quite a few new followers over the last few weeks and last few months. And so we figured it was time to say, who is Catholic Family Podcast? What are we doing? What are we trying to achieve? Why are we posting the things that we post? And and I guess the best way to start that real quick before I bring you in, Dad, is to tell you, you know, why I started. I started this back, I think it must have been January of last year, so 2021. And I started a podcast because I was simply sick of everyone only talking about COVID. You know, I'd, I'd go to I'd go to church and we talk about COVID, and, and I'd go online and people talked about COVID, and I'd go and I was so sick of it. I was like, okay, you know, we have so much beauty in our faith and so much that we can talk about and beautiful saints and in in culture and tradition and 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 why don't we talk about that stuff? You know, or why aren't we talking about being manly or you know what's going on with the CMRI or who's getting ordained? And, and I'm lucky enough to have connections all throughout, especially the CMRI world. Um, I have many good friends who are priests in the CMRI or affiliated with them. That's just simply because I went to school there for, for four years in high school. And I just got to know a lot of these different priests and I have stayed friends with them. And some of them are very good friends of mine. And so, yeah, from there, it kind of started slowly. Anyone who's been here the whole ride, I don't think there are too many of you. I, I think uh, maybe a handful that have been here since January of 21. And anyone who has stayed that long, God bless you. That, that is truly, truly an accomplishment. And we appreciate you more than anybody else. But um, yeah, as we went along, we kind of grew and developed and, and picked up different topics and tried different things. We're always trying new things. And and I'd say that, you know, the first big step we took was, was having on His Excellency Bishop Donald Sanborn for a podcast. He came on and gave his definition or, or his description of, of the Kesesiakim thesis uh, and very good video, very, very kind of the bishop to come on and, and very generous of him. And from there, I, kind of, I think it kind of gave us a bit of traction, a bit of uh, respectability. And yeah, from there, we kind of grew. We got on Mario Dirksen of Nova Soto Watch. We've had on Steven Spore, Intro Ibo, um, from Intro Ibo, Dalatari Day, some really good, really respectable people. And it's pretty funny for me because I never expected it. I, it was kind of a garage thing where I was like, you know, I'm probably going to be talking to, to 10 viewers about things that I care about, but it's kind of exploded. And I think dad, how, how is your, your view of it gone? I guess through the, through, through the last year plus as you've kind of, you were, you were out kind of on the outside for the first months and then joined and kind of things just kind of built and built and built. Yeah. And really, I mean, I, I think it was the stupid as this sounds, it was probably when I first got the uh, Adobe um, um, pr production, this creative suite, and, and started playing around with videos and, and creating visual elements and stuff like that. That, that. That's when I think things, for me at least, really started to get fun. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm a numbers guy, and we'll probably talk about some numbers as, as we go. And, and um, it, it was really neat to, to watch, you know, watch the growth. And I remember back in the late 2021, um kind of watching your numbers every day or every few days or so and and was thinking boy if you ever get to 100 views per day that that's oof, that, that that's that's something else and you know and to watch it watch it grow and, and it grows steadily which is the beautiful thing about i think anything social media you put out a lot of content it grows consistently and then to get these big spikes we had we had the big spike with um with bishop sanborn uh, after that video and then we had another another um, big big spike recently. It was kind of cr we'll have that crazy story probably with Father Dominic, and um, and his video. But um, it, it's been it's been amazing to see. And and I mean the the, the I think the comments we talk about this sometimes the, the comments that we see in the comment section and the lives that have been impacted and the and the, the questions we get and the I mean the, the really well thought out even people who don't agree with us asking very intelligent questions and we can't even get to them all and and i mean there, there's so much that's so gratifying about what we do that it just it i know it, it keeps me going well and as and as we've gone i know people have asked 
different times. Why, why did you do this video or what are you doing? Or we want more of this. And, and they're, sometimes I'm sure they're right. And sometimes we really don't know. I mean, I, I just kind of wing it. And I'd say the only basis behind everything. And, and I, I really mean this is all for the greater glory of God. And that that's truly, I think what we're really trying. And, and sometimes we failed at that. I mean, sometimes we have had some mistakes. We've, we've, we've missed the mark a few times. I think mm-hmm. not too many, but a few. But I think the goal is, yeah, I mean, we want to have edifying conversations. And sometimes that's talking about patriotism. And sometimes it's talking about nationalism. And sometimes it's talking about deep theological matters. And sometimes it's talking about how to raise kids or or, or your, your saint of the day. And I think that that's the beauty of our faith and of, of even the, the culture of our religion is that it's so well-rounded there's so much that you can talk about it that's important and so that's why we kind of do jump all over the place right there there's a a history that kind of wanted to get into and i'm actually working on a piece right now it's early on it i don't know it could be months but i have a hard time getting to it but i'm calling it i'm calling it set of a contism um uh, forming storming norming and performing and if there's anybody out there who has a a project management background, you know that that's the four stages of, of, a, of a project. And and basically what it's going to do is going to go through the history of, of our movement and how basically the, the, the goals and objectives, the viewpoint, the, the, the worldview of each generation has, has changed. And, and I think it started with these amazing t- trailblazers that, that we had um, early on, the, the with the Bishop Musi and of course Archbishop Took and Bishop Archbishop Carmona, um, Bishop Delorier, um, Father Dennis. You know, we 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 get a lot of those voices out here there that that broke. I mean, basically the world has shifted under their feet. But Father Depa uh, was another big one that that you of course had on with with Intro Evo. The the world has shifted under their feet, and, and they were just trying to make make sense of it. And, and they had this this heart. I mean, they were true pioneers, true Catholics. They saw things for what it, when the world was a massive confusion, they saw through it. And that was kind of the forming stage of the of the movement that that we see today. We moved into the 1980s and 90s, and this is when I first became um, part of the movement. Was the storming stage when when you had uh, the mid 80s? You had things were an absolute mess and I, I think you know at some point we'll kind of get into that a little bit not not in too much detail but we'll get into the mess that was up in mount st michael's that 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 um that was one of the major you know uh conclaves of of set of concepts at that time and, and they had some major issues just major issues going on but at the same time you had the um the break off of the or roughly the same time you had the break off of the nine priests from the uh, from a cone from from archbishop lefebvre and and they were all they were all American. They came here, and of course they created a, an organization, the SSPV, um, and and only three of the priests and they, they broke apart. You know, the three of the priests stayed with them. The other six broke apart, and um, and so you had this turbulent turbulent period of of storming in in the eighties and into the nineties, and and these groups didn't like each other, and they didn't get along together. And and you know it was it was a rough time, but I know that was my, my where I cut my teeth. And then you had the next section, the '90s and the 2000s, was a really interesting. This was what way the the norming period. You had Bishop Pivarunas taking um, over the CMRI. He had taken an oath of unity um, for for the set of a contest movement. And I think even more importantly, what you had happen at that point is the internet. And what happened with the internet is you got these like-minded Catholics together, and it, it happened most especially with the mothers, to a certain extent with, with the fathers and other people who wanted to talk theology, but also with the, with the teenagers. And these people got together, and basically, especially the mothers, they wanted to raise good children. They wanted to see the calendar of the saints. They, they, wanted, they, they wanted recipes. They, they did not want to talk about the, the, you know, the 1955 changes to the liturgy. They, they didn't want to talk about is it listed or not to go to the SSPX man? They just wanted to be Catholic. And that whole thing, norming process, it really brought about, I think, a certain degree of unity where we started to realize as a group that we were all together. We were all in this together. And even if we we're different tribes, so to speak, we can still love each other. We can still be together. We could still work together. And I think that that was what started to really put us onto a good path. 
Now, you advance forward to the 2000s, 2010s, and, and, and now into the 2020s. And yours now is really the first generation. I think yours is still kind of a small group, but it's the first generation where you now have a solid, you, you got churches, okay? In, in the earlier days, I mean, a lot of, of the set of traditional priests were, priests were doing their masses in storefronts or, or in people's houses mm -hmm. or whatever. Now and and now you see more and more. You, you've got uh, you got the churches and you got communities and, and you've got schools and you've got nuns and, and, and you've got basically a real a real Catholic life. Okay, and 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 so you your your generation, I think even more so your your children's generation. Our generation was still basically yoked to the Novus Ordo in the sense that we we're fighting it. We were trying to keep our, our hands off it. We were scandalized when, you know, John Paul II kissed the Koran. We were scandalized with with Benedict and, and you know, getting getting the the uh, voodoo doctor the blessing and, and all, all that. And we were still basically kind of in that matrix, so to speak, and trying to get out of it. But I think that what's happened in recent years, and this is what's so exciting for this podcast, is that you have now really unyoked from Rome completely to where Francis can go out and, and, you know, make some kind of stupid proclamation. And it's like, who cares? I mean, it's like, it, it's, it, it might as well be the Dalai Lama. It might as well be the Archbishop of Canterbury. He's not Catholic. Nobody takes him as Catholic, you know, in, in our movement anyways. And so it, it's almost a, a point of, of complete irrelevance. So on the one hand, you have still voices out there like Mario Dirksen. God, Bless you, Mario. I hope you're watching this podcast. And, and, and Mario is doing an amazing job of still documenting what's going on in the Novus Ordo and, and, be, and, and reaching countless souls and, 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 you know, bringing countless souls to the truth. And, and God bless you for what you're doing. And I think that there's a component of what we're doing there. And, and, and these are some of our most, you know, the numbers guy, right? These are still some of our most popular videos is Father Dominic talking about basically laying out what is said of Contism? Your interview with Bishop Sanborn and your interview with Mario Dorst, I think those are our three highest of, of all time, except for one fluky one. Those are the three biggest videos of all time. And I think it's what our community is, is asking. But where I feel like we've matured is that your generation now and your children's generation even more so are ready to get onto the business of living a Catholic life, okay? And so what we've really tried to focus, concentrate on, even though we know that a lot of these just doctrinal, kind of hardcore Father Dennis type type um, sermons and whatnot are, are great material, and we do try to get those out there, I really feel like the meat of our podcast now is in some of the softer stuff. It, it's It's in... It's in your mother's um, feast day quick takes. It's in the mom cast. It's in Mary Kate Ellis. You got a shout out to Mary Kate. She's she's put together a number of basically heroic saint type stories. Fantastic, it's just fantastic viewing. Jeffrey Buggy and, and he's done um, he's done uh, the boys the uh, young man's guide. Um, you know Holly and, and from Canada has been out and given a science of the saints and and a lot of these things. I think this is the real faith to me. This this is what we really want to try to bring to the community with Catholic Family Podcast. And it's, it's totally different. I think it's to, because I, I've lived through this. It's a totally different take on, on traditional Catholicism. Well, and, and I know a story of a family in the Midwest of the United States that claim their quote unquote conversion, you know, their, their move to say of a contism. They, 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 they say part of it was from a video from Catholic Family Podcast. And so I heard this from a priest. You know, the priest says, oh, Catholic Family Podcast helped to bring this family to to uh, tradition. And I was like, wow, that, that's pretty cool. I wonder which conversation. And, and my ego was getting up a little bit. I'm like, huh, I wonder what I said. You know, I, I must have said something pretty good. And and I learned what video it was. And it was a video that Ina, my wife, recorded about the agony in the garden. So it was one of our Lenten videos, and it was just a simple, short um, reading from Jim Bishop's um, The Day Christ Died. And it was, I don't know, 10 minutes long. 
And apparently they, they must have watched that. And I assume from that, maybe they, they watched other videos about it. And, and I think that they saw what we were doing was Catholic. You know, right. the, 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 and, it, and it all started, it didn't start from one of these theological videos. It started because mm -hmm. of, of a video about the agony in the garden. And I think that is beautiful. And I think exactly as you say, that that is the heritage that we have gotten you know that this has been passed down from the church and i think that as you say that is the era in which we are in is to re-find that heritage you know to not recreate it but to find it again you know to, to it's it's there you know the 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 history and the stories and, and the the beautiful culture of the church it exists and it existed and was built for two thousand years and it, then it was kind of lost for 40, you know, and, and it, it, it was it was going down and, and, and the people who who retained tradition, the city of a contest, they they were just doing everything just to hold on to the straws of any sort of faith, you know, any sort of mass and sacraments. And so as they were doing that, I think it, it was easy to lose the the niceties, right? The you know, the, the things that make our faith beautiful. And now, as you said, we, we've gotten, thank goodness, to to my grandparents and my parents, those two generations that fought and, and, and you know planted the flag and said, no, nope, this is the hill we're going to die on. And, you know, and, and then they stood there and they 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 kept that position. And from that position, we've been able to grow. And, and now we have that foundation of where we can say, hey, yeah, again, now it's time to 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 again show the beauty of the faith. And that's awesome. And, and as you said, I mean, it's 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 perfect to be able to yeah be, be part of that to be part of a, of a media that's not creating anything new it doesn't need to we don't need to create anything we're, we're just going and and pulling from what the church has already given us right there, there's a our beloved um father bernard utley who, who's a little bit of a, a social media giant and with with a lot of his old videos he was he was in olathe colorado at a time when we were and, and he had some adult doctrine classes and we, we were extremely fortunate to be able to attend those. And one of the things he said that, that stuck with me, he was actually talking about Protestantism at the time. And he said that Protestantism is basically just a loosely cobbled together set of bumper sticker, you know, quotes. Um, you know, pay no, uh, 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 call me no man father other than your father in heaven or, or whatever. I mean, and it's basically Protestant, that's, that's, that's all it really is. But Catholicism, when you really look at it, is an ecosystem it is those the word he uses the spiritual ecosystem that that is just vast and, and beautiful and diverse and and there's so much to it there there's there, there's the count i mean for me i know personally and maybe others are like this i've known through the, my, my adult life the closer i am to the calendar of the saints the closer i am to god and, and there's just something about the beautiful seasonality of of the church and and you know, the, the 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 liturgy and, and the annual um cycle and, and and all that but you get into the the, the lives of the saints and, and it's just it's it's extremely powerful but there is so much there and and that's what we want to to try to 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 bring and uh, I, I know that you know you you recently had father bead on and, and talk about the mission in in um in africa in, in nigeria and, and you know we had dominic Braganza from from india we've got a, a, another couple of videos from from india that, and to me, the, the universality there is is extraordinary. I, I love to see people with foreign accents, and and because you you understand just how universal this faith is, and people all over the world are finding it. That's so true, and it, and it is one of the plus sides of social media that I am able to have a group, you know, of on Telegram or Twitter, and I say, hey guys. I've got, I've got this, you know, and this would be a really cool video and I need someone to help me do it. And I've got people, yeah, in, in, in Canada and Australia and England and, and India and, and all over the place who are willing to contribute Ireland. And, and, and these guys are, they're, they're ready for it. They're ready for, oh, I, I want to say a fight, you know, they, they, they want, they want something, they want a crusade. And, and this is something that we, we I, I recorded a podcast that unfortunately probably will have to be re-recorded due to technical issues but we talked about that we talked about you know the young men especially want something to to really fight for they want a crusade and i think that they think 
that you need a physical crusade and you need to go, you need to go, you know, pick up a, pick up a sword and go find, find someone to, you know, cut off their head or something. And obviously that's, that's not reality. And the reality, the reality is that the crusade is of course, saving our own souls and then right. saving the souls of those around us. And I think that if we can get that across to, to the next generation that is filled with this fiery spirit, you can unlock just almost unlimited amounts of, of, Catholic power, I suppose, if that's the right word. And I, I think evangelism and, and truly, you know, people who are, who are going to be on fire with the love of God and the love of the faith. And and now we have the Internet, which can be used as a good tool. It's usually used as a bad tool, but now we can use it as a good tool. And with with the support of people, as you said, all around the world, you can go and 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 really bring souls to God. I mean, we've seen it, as you said, in our comment section. You mm -hmm. see people saying, ah, aha, you know, ah, now I get it. You know, now, right. now is the truth. And that's just simply from, from a video that we published or, or, or an amazing sermon from Father Dominic Radecki or something else. And, it, and it's, it's not our brilliance. Right. It's simply right. doing the work. It's simply, you know, you know, finding what the church has already taught, finding work that other, again, you know, like some of the, it, it's funny, like people, people give me credit for, for some of these videos that, that we produce, like, uh, there was one I did the other day about the um, the jurisdiction or the authority of the state of a um, uh, um hierarchy or, or bishops and priests and, and why home owner position doesn't really work. And people are like, oh, you know, great job, Kevin. It's like, I just I just simply read it from right. Stephen Spray's website. <laughs> you know? So it's like so. But that's the beautiful thing that these, these things exist. We have brilliant laymen and women and, and priests and bishops who have been creating content and are still creating content. Mm -hmm. And. And we're just able to, to, yeah, get it out there a bit. And again, yeah. it, it's slowly working. Well, what, and what I love so much, <clears throat> and where where I think that the the Catholic Family Podcast is starting to to really separate and, and to make a difference here is, I go back <clears throat> to my earliest days. I remember some of my earliest days evangelizing was right about the time that John Paul II kissed the Quran, and you know the, that was basically the the totality of our our evangelizing our, our outreach was was finding scandal in the Novus Ordo and bringing that scandal and, and trying to say okay here's true teaching here's false teaching and, and as time's gone on uh basically what, what's happened now is is you've had a, a we call it semi-trad movement which is the re recognize and resist type movement which which is a horrible horrible movement it is so anti-catholic but it, but what we've done is to a large extent our, our evangelism kind of moved into that group, the, the Lefebvreist or, or whatever you want to call it. And, and <clears throat> what you find, and I found this, is that they have about 10 arguments. We have about 10 counter arguments. And you just go in circles. And, you know, I, I remember uh, several times with, with a couple of the bigger, I won't name them, but a couple of the bigger names out there. I would have discussions with them. They would bring up one of the arguments, you know, you don't have the authority or whatever it is. And, and you know, I would give them a, a perfect counter argument be from the church and, and they would take it and, and they wouldn't even respond. No, no response. And, and so I thought, okay, maybe I'm making some, some progress here the next day. And this is a lot of time the next day, the same person would came out with the same argument. Okay. And so they weren't learning anything. And, and so it, it kind of, you know, helped me to understand that we're not, I mean, we're laymen, right? And, and we're not even theologians. We're not the ones who should be out there trying to convince people that sedevacantism is true. All right. That's the Holy Ghost. That's God. The, the, he's got to, he's the one that's got to bring people over the finish line. What I think we can do as a, as a movement is show people that our Catholic faith, not sedevacantism, but the Catholic faith as it stood for 2000 years is beautiful. It's wonderful. And, and, and that's, I think what we can bring to the world because the, the Novus Ordo has, has so lost it. And, and I think that, you know, like you say, in the comments, we see people, wow, I didn't even realize that traditional Catholicism was a thing. Well, yeah, because you haven't been shown it and, and you haven't seen it. No, nothing you, I mean, nothing, these people who have commented, nothing they've done wrong. It's just, they've not had access to it. And now, that we can kind of bring this to the world. I think that's such a beautiful thing. Yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, as you said, it's, it's amazing how much of it is just simple ignorance. I mean, I, I did a podcast with Matthew from Twitter 
recently and, and, and he was saying that you know he first went into a traditional latin mass when he was already in college and he'd never seen anyone he'd never seen a woman wear a veil he never heard gregorian chant he never heard beautiful church music you know he'd never seen incense you know mm -hmm. shortly before that he had never really understood what confession was for what it was about why why he should go to confession i mean these are things that we kind of take for granted but this was a this was a guy who you know he was conservative nova soto and he just didn't know about it. I, and, and, and as he found it, I mean, it, listen, it's a really good interview. I recommend anyone to go listen to it. It's about the, the social media influencer. It's on it's on the channel. And, and it's a great story. And it's one that I think many people have experienced. And it was just simply step by step process of, of learning. You know, it was learning. Yeah, exactly. What what? And, and Matthew had a great line at one point where he said, you know, after he had gone to the Latin mass, you know, he went home and he thought, why did they take this from us and who mm -hmm. took this from us and yeah. that's the question that they've got to ask themselves as you said they've got to ask themselves so what we've got to provide as you say is the ability to see what the church is and what right. the church was so we still have it so if yeah. we provide that then they have to go and say what why do i not have this why do i not have the love of the papacy why can i not respect the pope why, why do i think the pope is a, is a moronic clown and, right. and then they have to just go home and think wait that can't be right you know and, and i think that's what we can provide and i think as you said going and arguing with them you just you do it till you're blue in the face but if you just show hey we're happy because we are living a true catholic faith as our ancestors did and we're happy about it. And I think that that's something that's changing too. You know, the whole idea of state of Contism, I think even 10 years ago, it was really looked at as almost this cult kind of icky side movement that, you know, a bunch of creeps kind of, you know, and which is really unfair, of course, as, yeah. as we know. But I think even, I think now it, it, as it continues to, to grow and, and as Bergoglio and, and Rome continue to just go off the deep end, that I think people really start to say, wow, okay, these guys have got something going on. Yeah. Uh, and, and when I go back, I go back 10, 15 years. I even go back to some of my earlier, earlier days uh, in, on Twitter. And, and I think that the mistake we made, and, and it's totally natural. I, I mean, I totally understand it, was that we looked at ourselves as set of contest first and Catholic second. And, and, and that, so we were basically our, our whole, I don't know, almost our whole public presence. I don't want to say our whole religion, our whole public presence was about defending that position. If you look at the Fenites, <clears throat> they're, they're a cult, basically, and their whole existence is uh, baptism of desire and baptism of blood, and, and their arguments against that, that's all they seem to be able to think about. And so I think we kind of fell into that same trap, too. So at least to the extent that we projected ourselves publicly, it was in order to push that position. And now I think what you're seeing is we have gotten established enough, we've gotten secure enough, we, we, we've got outstanding clergy i mean i just can't say enough about about our our clergy and bishop hiverunas and and now bishop mcguire and, and bishop sanborn and and these these amazing priests that, that, that we have but i think thanks to this whole infrastructure now we're able to look at ourselves as catholics first and and set of second and and really start to 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 bring out the faith i know one of the things that um this was a this was a real a crusade of mine. I think anybody who knew me on Twitter, I'm not really on there anymore, but anybody who knew me knew that one of the things I really tried to do was go into our own community and say, guys, we need to be more Christ-like. We need to love each other. We need to love our enemies. We, we need to present the facts, but do it in a in a charitable way. And I think that was the the, the onset of, of a movement that really kind of took took root well amongst that of a contest. And so what you see now, I think, on the social media even and this is one of the most gratifying comments i get that i see and i usually see it secondhand but you'll see somebody come out and say you know i'm not saying to be contest i don't have any real use for the position but i watch how these people behave and how they present the truth and they do it charitably and they do it factually and, and they do it simply and then i see the hatred and the name calling and the lack of apologetics on the other side and it makes me say, hmm, what's going on? Something's going on here. And, and so I think that to a large extent, there are a lot of people who maybe 10 years ago would have been hostile to sedevacantism, who at least now see the movement and say, 
man, there's there's something going on here. There's there's they, these people that they, they love each other, they love their faith, and and they're they're moving in a good direction. Well, and I think yeah, and, and I and I and maybe I'm wrong here, but I think that that's also why I like on this podcast to have different topics as well. I mean, even if it is again talking politics or patriotism or, or whatever it is, because I think. Okay. It, it normalizes it a little bit. I mean, I mean, I know not everyone likes that. I mean, the people complain about it every time I do it, but but I think that you know it just shows that everyone has these conversations. I mean, I, I want to talk about the energy crisis that's coming this winter because I may I may not have power this winter, guys, and that's a really serious, extremely serious crisis, which is probably coming. So so if I'm not podcasting this winter, it's because I literally don't have power. But you know, it, it's an interesting topic, and it's one that. We could even talk about the pros of it. I, I think my my wife, my, my, you know, she was saying, hey, maybe it's a good thing for Germany. But anyway, the, the, the idea being these are conversations that people have around the table and, and they're conversations that they can always have a Catholic spin. Everything in our life has a Catholic spin. Now, I, th I think you got to be careful with that because you can start getting really judgmental really quick. You can just start saying, well, you know, I'm I'm a Catholic up on my throne and you know, damned, damned, damned type of a thing. And so I think you do it, you got to be careful with that. But I think you can still have an honest conversation and just, you know, look at it through the eyes of someone trying to be Catholic. And I, I think that's interesting. And again, I just want to kind of defend myself because people always complain when we do political stuff. And, and people, I, I know that people, a lot of our audience has come from the boost in theological matter. So Bishop Sandmorton and Father Father Dominic Radecki, and and which is good, of course, that they were amazing interviews and amazing clergymen. And I hope to continue having sermons and also podcasts with with priests and bishops. I mean, I've got I've got the one with Father Bede, which as we as we talk now hasn't been published, but it's it's phenomenal just to to talk with a priest from Africa and and hear his story and their culture. And but it's a, also a dangerous road when. I, as a layman, and you, it, 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 when we're running this show, get too bogged down in only talking about deep theological matters when we're a couple of laymen. I mean, we're, we're and, and so I think, again, we're, we want to kind of temper that. We want to say, hey, this is important. When it comes up, we will gladly take it, but it's not the only thing we're going to talk about. We are going to have on saint, you know, daily saints as much as we can. And that's something, too, that, I mean, as we talk here, anyone watching this, if you want to help contribute to this, let us know. I mean, mm -hmm. Mary Kate, you know, she reached out to me. I think I, I think I, I may have posted on Facebook. And I was like, hey, you know, we're looking for help. And she's like, hey, you know, I, I've taken some writing courses and maybe maybe I could help write some stories for you, you know, some stories of the saints. And I didn't I mean, I didn't know her. So I was kind of like, OK, yeah, sure. Sounds good. You know, let's give it a shot. And they've been great. They've turned into one of the better, more beloved part of the podcast because they're they are simple and they're they're catholic and, and they yeah. make me tear up like every time because they're just simply they're these super uplifting you know even though they're sometimes about saints who died when they were 20 years old but it's like wow you know that that's that's the dream right i mean that's the goal mm -hmm. i mean that's what we want and but anyway and so if anyone does want to contribute and we need so much help we need help in, in editing audio editing writing anything if let's say it this way, the more help we get, the more we're able to do. And I mean, yeah. I think that's really true. And we have so many ideas that don't come to fruition just because it, it often comes down to only a few people who are reliable, which is fine. The reliability is completely understandable. People, right. people, uh, you know, these people who have families who are contributing anything is just incredible. I mean, truly like amazing that they, they contribute any of their time at all, because I know how much it takes, but if you got a couple minutes to give, you know, if you got an hour to give, send me an email, kevin89davis at gmail.com. We'd love to have your help. I'll give you a little bit of an example of, of where we're going here. So I, I, I know you've talked to, Kevin, you've talked to um, uh, Mario Dirksen and Steve Spray and, and um, um, Intro Evo and, and gotten the uh, okay to to take um, the material off of, of their blogs, their websites, and, and use them on, on Catholic Family Podcasts. Last weekend, I, I called um, Gerard Keaveny up up in uh, Idaho and talked to him. He's he's the one who runs traditional Catholic sermons, 
and um, you know, asked him about using some of that material. And he was so excited. He was so and and you you think about it, how is how is the faith really at, at an organic level? The faith is transmitted from one generation to the next through the Sunday sermons. That, that that's how the priests basically that that's how they that's how they give give us the the um, the faith, and it passes down from one generation to the next. On Catholic traditional Catholic sermons, there are hundreds and hundreds of sermons, and these are amazing sermons. You've got um, Fatima conferences; they're mostly audio, but you got a certain amount of video as well. There is so much material there that we could not possibly ever go through it. Okay. If somebody out there was interested in going through Catholic fan, or uh, traditional Catholic sermons and listening for, and we probably give you some guidelines. Here, here's some. Here's what we're really looking for. I think that makes a good Catholic family podcast, and we can put some visuals to it, what whatnot. But you go through those and find sermons, or find um, retreats, or or find whatever to to actually for us to go through and process and just tag us with them. Um, th that would be absolutely golden. And it's just somebody spending their time going through, listening to sermons, and finding out which ones would be good for Catholic Family Podcast. If I remember right, Kevin, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, <clears throat> wasn't Father Dominic's video one that somebody literally had just turned you on to and say, hey, you got to watch this sermon? You did. I took it and put some visuals to it, and then we put it out there, and it's got like 12,000 views. Yeah, and 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 I have apologized to Father Dominic about that because I, yeah. I I took it I took well because I took it I was like yeah you know he's not going to mind because a couple views. couple hundred views he's yeah. not going to care it should right. be fine it's already publicly posted and then yeah of course it gets twelve thousand views and it's like um Father I am really sorry about that <laughs> yeah. so again a public apology to Father Dominic and he and he took it very well of course as I mean just a, a an amazing human being that he is and um. No, it, that's exactly right. I had someone on Twitter just reach out and say, "Hey, Kevin, you know, have you have you seen this sermon? Um, it's really good, and it just really lays out the state of a contest position, or you know, some of the state of a contest, you know, argument at, at least." And and I went and watched it. I was like, "Yeah, okay." And, and I, I didn't have. I mean, I, it, it's a very good sermon. It, it's mm -hmm. kind of the basics of the position. I was like, "Oh, sure." You know, I sent it to you, and you liked it, and spent you said you spent quite a bit of time in putting it together, and put it up and you know one day through we got a thousand views and i'm like oh boy okay Whoa. what's happening yeah but it's yeah. cool it's, it's it's amazing and it's and, and that's again the beauty of anyone who wants to help us we, we we can't offer you we can offer you maybe a little bit of money for anyone who's editing because that that, that takes a lot of time especially post production is tough yeah it post production is tough and and it requires some skills and some programs but but we really need it desperately need it so we would be willing to pay um for that um but yeah, we don't have much to offer, but, but just the idea that one podcast, one, one narration, one script mm -hmm. can, can convert somebody can, can, and right. I've seen it. I mean, for goodness sake, I've seen, I've, I've seen one video that, that Ina recorded about the agony in the garden. And somehow now this family has CMRI priests traveling to them, you know, in the Midwest, it, that's mm -hmm. incredible. And so that is worth more than any money. I mean, easily. Right. Yeah, I mean, not even a question. And, and I've had that quite a few people. And, and that's that's incredible. And so it, it just takes a little bit of work. And again, the, the material is there. The material is yeah. there. I mean, we have it. I mean, if you want to go and, and write a new story or something like Mary Kate's done, that's awesome. But you know what? She finds the material from something that, you know, from stories that have already existed. That, again, that's the beauty of it. We have 2,000 years of material. So yeah. it's just a matter of a little bit of work putting it together. Yeah. And, and I mean, one one quick story here. Your, your mother was was doing uh, at least doing the podcast on one of the, one of the saints. I I don't remember which which saint it was. A feast day quick take, and she went through and found a write up that that one of the sisters, older sisters in um, Spokane, had done a time ago. And she read through it and she said, "I can't do better than this. This right. is as good as you can do." And and so she just and she gave attribution. She you know she she quoted, but she basically almost that entire podcast was just a reading from this sister in in Spokane. She's done other times where she's taken big sections from from um, uh, Father Garen Jay uh, the with the liturgical year who who is so incredibly eloquent. 
And, and I think you find, and this is what where I kind of have been too, you find these nuggets, tumultuous times from, from the um, Radecki brothers. We had our son William go through and look at something, and he found a, a piece on the young Carol Wotila, which was a, a really good podcast that that um, he did. And he he read it through it, and we did some post production, and and it was beautiful. But yeah, the, the material is absolutely out there. You don't have to. I mean, Mary Kate is doing a fantastic job of of taking um, stories and rewriting them into kind of you might kind of works of fiction, right? Fiction fact um, that that um, um, just excellent, excellent stuff. But at the same time, if you don't have that talent, yeah, you can just find really good stuff. And even if it's just finding it and saying, hey, William, hey, Jeffrey Buggy, hey, Marie Vandermost, or, you know, or, or Lisa, whoever, can you read this? Or Kevin, can you read this? And, um, you know, that is is excellent stuff, too. Totally. And I think that that's, it's again, it's it's the mission and, and it's it's something that's just, it's been incredible how it's grown. I mean, I mean, we where we are now is, is somewhere I never possibly imagined where it could go, but, but that shows you, to me, it shows that the Holy ghost is behind it, at least a bit that there, that there, if you have these pure intentions of, of truly just trying to further God's glory, mm -hmm. I, I think it just works. It's just, it's just incredible. I mean, sometimes, yeah, I get a random message that says, Hey, look at this sermon from father Dominic. I mean, and that's how this works. And I think that, you know, as a group, as a Catholic family, you know, around the world, if we get into the, in this together and not just on this podcast, I mean, come on, you, know, it, it, you can go and help any number of people. And, and of course it's more important what you do in person or whatnot, but we're just talking about our podcast now, but you know, the more help we have, you just imagine, you just imagine the souls that we could reach. And I can yeah. tell you on social media, you see daily more and more people who are desperately searching for truth. They right. want truth, they want tradition, and they want God. Yeah. And, and and it doesn't sound it doesn't seem like it because because the world doesn't want you to hear that. Though I mean, desperately does not want you to hear that. But it's really true. You have your crazies, you have your purple-haired Karens, but they're actually a minority. Mm -hmm. And th there are more people searching for truth than there are going crazy on the streets. I can tell you that for sure. We've just got to reach them. And again, the more help we have, truly, the more people we're going to reach. And and please, 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 everyone say a prayer for us that we yeah. that we keep on the right course and that we, you know, if we make mistakes, we fix them as as I hope we have done. And yeah, I mean, pray, pray for pray, pray for the Catholic Church. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it is growing, and that's that's what we're here for. We're we are we are a militant group of people trying to get to heaven together. Right. One of the things I, I would propose out there, and, and this is this this whole initiative has not been as successful as I would like it to be, but I, I think that there, there's still great potential here. If you're consider, let's say you're you're watching this, and you say, yeah, yeah, I'd kind of like to get involved. I want to do something simple. Okay, I don't want to I don't want to commit to 20 hours a week. I just want to do something simple. Film yourself. And your favorite saint who is your favorite saint and why and send that to kevin and we've got a couple that we haven't published yet that we, we I, want, I try to get six or seven together into a into a podcast but we'll put them we'll put them together and it's an excellent i mean i know that the talking to talking to your, your your mom kevin you know we we go through and we put these favorite saint videos out there and she'll point them and she'll say that's the faith that's the faith right there these little children who most of them you're finding out, okay, just you're finding out that their their favorite saint is usually their name saint, who who they're named after. When they're when they're three, four, five years old, that's what they know. And I mean, it, it's kind of triggering to me. If you're a young parent, you gotta take that process of naming your child seriously because that saint is probably gonna be your child's favorite saint early on in life. And but I mean, there's so many lessons there, and there's so much good that can come out of that. That that's part of that ecosystem. There are so many, there's no wrong answer. You can give any saint is your favorite saint, and it's the right answer. And and you know to to the extent that you can do that, I think that you can really help push things forward here. And I I heard one I think from one of the kids that I don't think I even recognized the name, and I had to go look it up. I was like, okay, wait, who, who's that saint again? You know, and that's cool too, because I mean, it's like, you know, that that that's that's a beautiful part of it. We can help. We can learn also, you know, from from these saints and and. And it just, you have to have a smile on your face when you watch it. It's not going right. to get us 10,000 views and that's totally fine. Who cares? I right. mean, it's not about views. I mean, it's, 
you know, it, it's nice because we know people are seeing good content. At least that's the goal. But, yeah. you know, it, it, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, where, wherever we are, if we look back on the content, are we going to be proud of it or not? And I think that these these favorite saints, I mean, 100 percent. I mean, they, they are they are, as you say, they are the simple joy, the simple beauty of the faith. And that's sure. especially for kids. That's so important. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that, you know, it's, it's one of the dreams of mine is that as we as we continue on this mission where I think we're we're slowly I think we've realized that when it comes to theological argument, we, we've we've argued theologically against the Fenians. That's stupid theology. We've won that one. We talk we, we argue against the recognizing resistors and tell them how how sinful I mean, it's basically it's a sinful position. And I, we've won that argument, you know, and not everybody agrees, but but that that's on them. And even against the Novus Ordo, I mean, sometimes you don't even have a, the ones that um, believe that that um, Bergoglio is Catholic. I mean, you can't even really discuss it much with them. But for the most part, I mean, the, the, we've taken that hill. We, we, the, the the truth of the faith, we, we've taken it. And, and you know, God bless like him. God, God bless Mario for for, for continuing on and and. and pointing things out and, and waking people up. But I think what I would love to see happen is us to move on to where the really the one the 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 podcast that just nail it are are like the one from a week or two ago with um Pope St. Pius X. Uh you know that was that was one that was his story is so remarkable and mm -hmm. and so so beautiful and, and um and, and Lisa did just an amazing job of of um bringing it out. I mean that was just an amazing video. And and so and so many of these these Saint Isidore of Seville. If you ever if you if you're looking for one to go back to, amazing stories. And 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 we're it's like we're able to go through to the extent we can. We're trying to re-energize the, the 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 faith. And 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 I know that um, you know this is especially on feast day quick takes. But but there there the faith has has had a tendency even for us to kind of become two dimensional. And and our, our favorite saints are our cardboard cutouts are you know the other way the Saint Saint Patrick behind me they're they're statues on the wall and and whatnot but when you really understand these stories and and the stories of, of the faith and, and some of the great writings that we have out there there's such a three dimensionality that that's what I think is going to really bring people to the faith. I hope so. I hope so, and I, and I hope that yeah. I mean, as as we continue to go on, and, and hopefully we'll get to continue to get. Odd little podcasts like like William Wallace and and you know actually yeah. being Robin Hood and a, and a true devoted Catholic and, and and I think that again you know those are the things that you just kind of happen upon and and it mm -hmm. and it I think it also expresses the beauty of the church and, and and the the little quirky stories that you hear now but but again it, it shows you know the these as you said the, the three dimensional version of these saints and and I, saint Pius the 10th is such a good example because we can really know his story because he was so he was so recent mm -hmm. and we can see him we can see his pictures and i think that really helps to be able to see him okay while wow, he was a man you know he, he was an actual human uh there goes my camera okay well we're back and of course you know the the never <laughs> ending uh issues with technology uh for some reason my camera just decided to stop working and uh well i'm on my laptop camera now so apologies to that it wouldn't be the catholic family podcast if something went right for the entire podcast but <laughs> that it's charming right guys that, that's what someone has told me that, that it is charming that we are not this clearly not a a high uh falutin, um show but you know what do you do do you have any last so, words then yeah there was one one more Point that I kind of wanted to make, and and, and one of the the um, questions that that I think that that I, I had wanted to answer, one of the things, and I know going back a ways, there was one of the questions that I have had the hardest time answering um, as a, apologetic, you know, doing apologetics out online and whatnot. When somebody comes and says, "Okay, you had the Vatican II Church, the, the Revolution, and whatnot, and not one bishop broke communion." Over the Vatican II documents, even though there were heresies built into it, how did that happen? And and I think that it, it's a I mean it's a difficult question, but as I have really started to explore that, it's incredibly fast. I mean I think it hits deep in my soul and hits deep in perhaps in the souls of others of 
how did this happen? How, how did this whole thing happen? And the church just whiffed on it. The, the, you had, you had, you know, Monsignor Joseph Vinson, you had Cardinal Ottaviani, you had Cardinal Spellman, and you had all these conservatives and, and, and the bishops at the time were so basically conservative. You had maybe a third who, who were, who were modernists, but you still had two thirds that were still basically traditional, but they all just let it go. And, and so to me, I think one of the, one of the things I know I, it's one of my personal um, projects coming up in the uh, coming months is to address that question. How did it happen? And, and so we're, we're looking, and we've done a little bit of this already. We're looking at some of the heroes of the faith. You already looked at um, Father DePaul with, with um, Intro Evo, which is a fascinating story. And and you, you've you got some of the other heroes of like the CMRI and Father Dennis, and we're, we're showing his um, some of his old stuff on Sunday. But then you got Monsignor Joseph Vincent, who's a fascinating character and i'm thinking about doing a podcast on him who was one of the leading um conservatives who wrote in his diary basically almost pure everything sounded like some, it was coming from a you know mario dirksen it was it was purely no question about it basically set of a contest and what, what is happening to my church and then after the after the council he had a he had a meeting with pope pius the sixth or the yeah, pope paul the sixth and 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 he just he just lost it after that and and he he faded into obscurity and he gave up the car and he died six years later of cancer i think he died of a broken heart and and so you have these heroes of the faith like archbishop took who who you know not only broke and and gave us the movement that we have today but was basically martyred for it and and um you know i'd love to be able to run the um the story of uh, father francis miller Talking about Archbishop Took and the actual story behind um, his, his abduction and and um, you know his so-called conversion back to the Novus Ordo, what a fascinating, unbelievable story. But to me, that's one. You know, as we look, especially your generation, Kevin, as we are now in this place where we've where you can see things in retrospect, you can see the um, Vatican as being this outside influence. The question comes up: How did we get here? And to me, it's a fascinating, fascinating um, question that we'll be trying to explore. And to that, on that note, and, and to the extent that um, you know, we're talking about uh, getting some some um, participation, to the extent that you have old audios, old videos, old sermons, um, things online, things written, books, what whatnot that we can use as source material to answer this question: How did we get here? Um, you know, go, go ahead and give it to Kevin and, and, you know, we'll do what we can to, to produce it and get it out there and see if we, because I don't we're never going to get a nice, easy, clean answer. I think the answer is hopelessly complex, but exploring it, I think is going to be worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that sounds good. I mean, there's a lot of things, yeah, as you said, there's a lot of things we'll never know, but I'm looking a lot into John the 23rd, you know, for, for my, the book that I'm writing and it's, it's really it's incredible. It's incredible to see how it happened and, and the people who, who made it happen. It, it's pretty bizarre. It's pretty bizarre. So I, 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 am curious to see what comes out of this because but it is, it is a really good question. I mean, even just mm -hmm. even psychologically, how did this happen after you had such a glorious time with Pius the 12th? And maybe that's why people got too complacent and thought what could go wrong. I, who knows? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure either. Obedience played a huge obedience played a huge part of it. I remember yeah. a quote from Cardinal Ottaviani, apparently, and a very telling quote. He apparently, I mean, the legend is he leaned over to during the opening speech of John twenty third at the Vatican to Council. He, he leaned over to a cardinal sitting next to him. He says, "I hope that I shall. I hope that I die during the council, for I shall die a Catholic." Okay, it's a very telling. It's a very telling uh, quote from the standpoint that he was basically saying. If the church goes off the rails, obedience dictates that I go with it. Mm -hmm. Okay? It doesn't make sense to us in retrospect. Right. But the obedience of the time was such. And, and you know, we, 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 did a, we did a piece on um, 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 Archbishop Sheen that we ended up taking down. And I think that part of it was because of that. Because we made assumptions about his intent, his, his obedience, the context of the time that that um you know were probably not fair to him and and it was just i think the whole the whole thing 
we understand it now as to a certain extent, 2020 hindsight, we understand what they were going through when it was in the time, it was so confusing and it was, it, it was so unbelievable, so unthinkable that um, I, I think it drove a lot of, of what they did. But that to me is just, it, it's, it's one of the most fascinating times in all of human history, other than our Lord himself It's one of the most fascinating times in all of human history. Awesome. Sounds good. And, and, and as, as you said, anyone who has information material that can help us, please send it to Kevin 89 Davis at gmail.com. Um, anything else? Again, anyone who wants to contribute in, in any way at all, um, let me know. Send, send me an email. You can find me on Twitter as well at, uh, at Kevy Gillikin, uh, K-E-V-V-Y-G-I-L-L-I-K-I-N, Facebook, Kevin Davis. Um, yeah, anything you want. I mean, if you had suggestions for a show, suggestions for someone who should come on for an interview, that, that really helps. I mean, and that, that really helps just to say, hey, here's someone who has an interesting story. That's great. Mm -hmm. that, that's how I got a sto the story about William Wallace, which is one of the more fascinating podcasts I've ever done about William Wallace being Robin Hood and a great Catholic. That's fantastic. And that's just because someone said, hey, my dad is an expert on William Wallace. So, OK, yeah. cool. You know, so yeah. so please, if you know somebody like that, if you yourself are someone like that, then let me know. Send me an email and we will get running with it. And and again, most importantly, please pray for us at the Catholic Family Podcast that we keep doing everything we can do to do God's will and to further the glory of God. And yeah, I guess that that's all, that's all I've got. And, and, and stay tuned for, for more content, uh, which I, I'm, I'm even interested by this, this content about, about what, what you're saying about the Vatican too. Cause I think it's, it's fascinating. And that's what we, that's what we want. We want people to hopefully be edified and come, come away from our podcasts thinking and, and, and hopefully most of the time with a smile on their face. Right. Exactly. Perfect. Yep. Well, thanks. This has been, this has been great. I, I hope that um, people gotten something out of it and, and not only kind of understand a little bit better who we are and where we're going, but you know, what can you, what, what can you do to help? Exactly. Awesome. Great. Dad until next time. God bless. Yep.